In this section, you'll hear a conversation between David and Claudia about their holiday trip. First, you have some time to read questions one to five. Now listen to the conversation and answer questions one to five. Well, Claudia, our first semester at university is almost over. Oh, I can't wait for the holidays. Oh, me too. Why don't we go somewhere far away and forget about lectures and essays and all that hard work? Sounds good to me. How about if we go to the coast? It would be great to do some swimming and surfing. The coast would be good, but. Let's look at our other options. There are the mountains. They're nice and cool at this time of year. There's also the desert, which I really enjoyed last year. What about going to Sydney? I've never been there, and they say it's a great city to visit. Well, I agree. Sydney would be good, but there are too many tourists there at this time of year, and I'd rather get away from buildings and cars. I vote for the mountains. All right then. Let's do that. Now. We have to decide where we're going to stay and how we're going to get there. Any suggestions? Well, for places to stay, there are the usual places: motels, hotels, and youth hostels. We can go camping too. I'm afraid I'm not a very good camper. I tend to feel a bit frightened sleeping outdoors. All right, we'll forget about camping. So, what do you prefer? Well, since neither of us has a lot of money. I don't think a hotel or motel would be possible. How about a youth hostel? Oh, I'd rather not go to a youth hostel. They're cramped and noisy, and the person in the bed next to you might be a snorer. No, I think we should find a small holiday house to rent, and if we get a few more friends to join us, it will be really cheap. Okay, you know it's the first time for me to travel to the mountains. What do you suggest to take? Mosquito net, I guess. Mosquito net is useful, but I don't want to add more weight to our luggage. So the insect repellent can do, I think. Besides, aspirins are necessary and some cold cure in case we feel sick or something like this. Do you think we need binoculars and a camera? Well, it would be a good idea to take binoculars. As to a camera, I'm not very for it. I'd rather record the scenes in my mind. You're right. What about the money? How much do you think is enough, and how we should take it? I've learned from a friend about the cost. He told me that they spent about four hundred and eighty dollars for one week's tour. So I think five hundred dollars would be enough. We may need over three hundred dollars for the house. Have you got any traveler's checks? No, I haven't. But I've got a credit card、oh, and a saving card. Then take the credit cards with us. It would be more convenient to pay the house fees with a credit card. Before the rest of the conversation, you have some time to read questions six to ten. Now listen carefully to the rest of the conversation and answer questions six to ten. Oh, I nearly forgot the date. How long will we have before we have to be back here on campus? Under a week, I think. We'll leave on the fourteenth of April and come back on the twenty-first, because you know we'll start to study on the twenty-second. Do you know the definite locations of some holiday houses? I suppose it would be nice if we book in advance. Yes. Look at this brochure here. It says that there are several holiday houses near the mountains. I prefer the one near the woods. It's situated right across the road from the rainforest park.、Mm, that sounds good. We can easily go to the rainforest park then. Do you know what else we can do there besides visiting the park? I know that many people go there for bushwalking, but you need a good pair of walking boots, of course. Are there any dangers in the bushes? I'm a little frightened. In fact, there's no need to be nervous of the bushes, provided that you treat it with respect and common sense. Most of the animals and wildlife are gentle and harmless. 
there are venomous snakes to be aware of, but really they're much more frightened of you than you are of them. The other thing is that certain plants can cause irritation if you touch them with bare skin. I see. Well, I can't wait for the coming holiday. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section two. Section two. You are going to hear a student arranging to transfer between English classes. She is leaving a message on the language department's answering machine. The student's name is May Lee. First, look at questions eleven to seventeen. As you listen to the first part of the talk, answer questions eleven to seventeen. Hello, this is May Lee speaking. This message is for Mrs. Brooks in Student Affairs. Mrs. Brooks, I telephoned you last week, and you told me to call back and put the details of my request to transfer on the answering machine. I hope you can hear me easily. I have the form here. And I'll give you the information, working from the top to the bottom. As you know, my family name is Lee, spelled L E E, and my first name is May. My student number is zero zero two three one two. That's zero zero two three one two. I'm in Mr. Anderson's class. You know, he's the one who helps out with the football team. The next part of the form asks for my address. I'll give it slowly. I live at flat five, ten University Avenue. You probably know the building. It's just near the engineering school. The telephone number is eight one eight six zero seven four. And I share it with a lot of other people, so it's often engaged. I'll give it to you again. Eight one eight six zero seven four. I think that's all I have to put on this part of the form. I know you were curious about my reason for requesting a transfer, so I'll explain that next. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions eighteen to twenty. Now listen and answer questions eighteen to twenty. Now I'll tell you why I want to transfer between classes, Mrs. Brooks. I really like my teacher and my classmates, but I find it very hard not to speak in my own language. I just begin to think in English when the class ends, and I'm surrounded by other people from my country, so it's natural that we all speak in our mother tongue. I have been looking around for a class where there are very few other people from my country. So I'll be forced to use English. The best class I can find is the evening class, which begins at six p.m. Most of the students in that class come from countries which speak Spanish, and I can't speak a word, so I must use English. I have an Italian friend in the class, 
and she tells me there are two Hong Kong Chinese, six Spanish speakers, and one Japanese student. She says most people speak English at the break, although sometimes the Spanish slip into their own language. I check the class list, and two students have dropped out of the evening class, so there should be room for me. Could you please see if I can join the class? I'm not sure what the class number is, but the evening class I want is in room three o five of the Trotter Building. The class I'm in now is next door to the Trotter Building in Prince Tower, so it's very easy for me to find my way to the new class. I'm not going home until late today, so could you please leave a message for me at my friend Margaret's house? Her number is eight one two seven five four three. And she has an answering machine. I do hope you can transfer me, Mrs. Brooks. If there is any more information you need, please call me. Thank you very much. That is the end of section two. You will now have some time to check your answers. Now turn to section three. Section three. You will hear a female and a male student talking about the mock exams that they have just taken. First, you have some time to look at questions twenty-one to twenty-five. Now listen carefully and answer questions twenty-one to twenty-five. So, what did you think of the practice exams last week? You mean the mock exams? Yeah, I thought some of them were tough. They were certainly hard, and generally they were very long. Yeah, they were spread over a whole week, which made it impossible to relax. Exactly, but what did you think of each test? Of the seven exams we did. The least enjoyable for me were the two three-hour essay papers. Why didn't you like the essay papers? I'm not particularly good at writing things down like that in a short space of time, and I don't think it's a good way of testing our theoretical knowledge of medicine. I'm the opposite, I'm afraid. I'm much better in the written essay exams than the other types of tests. But what about the two multiple-choice exam papers in basic science and anatomy? They weren't too bad. If you didn't know the answer, all you had to do was guess.、Mm, that's okay, but I never feel comfortable with guessing. And you know that there is research that shows that women are disadvantaged when doing multiple choice questions compared to men. You've mentioned this before, but I'm not sure I believe it. It's true. Multiple choice questions benefit men more than women. They are a male construct. If you say so. It's not if I say so. Anyway, you have to be careful with multiple choice questions because of the negative marking. That can really bring the score down if you keep guessing and get all of the guesses wrong. It's double negative. Yeah, that is a danger. What about the role play? Did you like that? Yeah, with the actors and actresses as simulated patients. Yeah, I thought that was by far the best part of the exam. Why was that? What I liked about it was during the twenty-four test stations, we had a chance to show what we know about communicating with patients and show our practical medical knowledge, etc. Yes, I think I agree with you there. I enjoyed all of the stations, but I can tell you I was tired at the end. 
I have done a practice exam with 12 test stations, but not 24. It was exhausting, but also exhilarating. I agree completely. It lasted nearly four hours in total with the break. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 26 to 30. Now listen carefully and answer questions 26 to 30. What did you think of the other two exams? The two problem-solving tests? Hmm, I didn't think I was going to handle them very well. But in the end, I think they went better than I thought they would. What I liked most was the test where we had to work in groups of four and to solve a problem, we had to prioritise actions. That was very interesting. I'm not sure that I did very well in that, though. Did you feel comfortable being in a group of four and having four examiners watching you as you discussed the problem? We did practice it several times before. You learn to forget that someone is watching you. But some people are better at speaking in group situations like that and they get the best marks. The test doesn't just assess whether people can talk a lot. It's about showing you can listen Organise your thoughts and then show you can be part of a team, allowing other people to speak. Well, we'll have to see how it goes. When do the results of the mocks come out? They said next week, and then it's the finals two weeks later. Yeah, we've got that to look forward to. What is the policy on resets? Why? Are you planning to fail? No, but, well, you know what I mean. The resets are held in September, and if there is any problem after that... It goes to appeal. We'll just have to make sure we don't fail any part of the whole examination. I certainly wouldn't want to do any of it again. Me neither. It's hard when you are not allowed to fail any of the exams. I bet they don't have that policy in any other subject. Probably not. That is the end of Section 3. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Section 4. In this section, you will hear a report about crime and punishment in the UK. First, read questions 31 to 40. Listen to the report and answer questions 31 to 40. Like many other countries, Britain has experienced a great increase in criminal activity of nearly every kind. Nearly five times as many acts of violence were reported to the police in 1997 as 20 years before. Although most burglars are not caught, those who are caught overload the courts and prisons. Although the courts try, in theory at least, to use probation, community service and other devices to avoid sentencing people to prison. The 50,000 people in prison are more in proportion to the population than in any other Western European countries. Vast sums are being spent on building new prisons, but the prisons are still overcrowded. 
and the humiliation suffered by their inmates makes rehabilitation difficult. Many prisoners are released early on parole. The prisons in England are run by the Home Office, though each prison has a local board of visitors who make reports about conditions and also deal with serious bad behaviour. Normally, prisoners are released after serving two-thirds or less of the time for which they were sentenced. But an offence in prison may be punished by the loss of some days of remission. There are several kinds of prisons, including open ones, and some prisoners go out to work in groups outside. Prisoners who want to study for examinations are helped to do so, and there are training courses in prisons. But in practice, some spend little time outside their cells. Most crime is committed by young males and is opportunist and is not planned by hardened professional criminals, although these do exist in most common people's view. Crime tends to be concentrated in large cities and urban areas. About 94% of offences recorded by the police in England and Wales are directed against property, but only 5% involve violence. Rising affluence has provided more opportunities for casual property crime. In 1977, for example, car crime was only one-tenth of total crime, but this has risen to about 28%. The demand for and supply of illegal drugs had been an increasing factor in the incidence of crime in recent years. Regular crime surveys are undertaken in England and Wales, Scotland and in Northern Ireland, in 1999, a survey in England and Wales asked respondents for information about how crime had affected them in 1998. It estimated a total of 15 million crimes in 1998, the majority of which were against property. Violent crime accounted for only 5% of the total, while 36% involved vehicles, 9% were burglaries, and 30% other forms of theft. These surveys, the fifth of which is in progress, indicate that many crimes go unrecorded by the police, mainly because not all victims report them. That is the end of section four. You will have half a minute to check your answers.